Welcome to the Entertainment Roundup Midweek Edition. This is also part two of the continuation of the story I did on my previous Entertainment Roundup. Um, the reason why I'm I'm doing it now because number one, I did a almost 38 minute rant against particular people. I'm not going to do it here. Um, Needed to say, I'm aware that there are others out there who feels like the two directors are. I spoke my opinion. I have spoke about my feeling and my disdain towards what they have been feeling especially when they didn't do the movie so I'm not gonna go through that again <laughs> I don't think you need to hear me rant and rave about the same thing for the f almost a third time for the, even as much of a link of time but I do apologize for that meant to be one topic for that to for that story but it was an important story to me Especially since I have to talk about something that I recently saw on HBO. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. And for those who don't, I will fill you in. And actually give you a review. At least an episode review. Not the entirety of the show. Because it is a very interesting premise that they are doing with, that, with the show. And it got me pretty much wanted to go back for more. Um, I do consider that the way of work in progress. But nevertheless, a progress I'm willing to be on board for, and that is the Watchmen series. The Watchmen series um, is interesting considering that it is not like a traditional comic book. It, it works more of a drama. Do you hear me, Martin Corsese, when I say that? It works more as a drama. But then again, the movie itself also works more as a drama rather than a typical comic film. And in old typical fashion, the fans, especially those who haven't really read the book, or had, it all depends on, on your taste on how you expect these films to be made and these TV series to be made, either likes what they're doing or don't like what they're doing. Now, I will be saying right off the bat before I even talk about the series, I liked the movie. I thought the movie was very fun. It was very different. It had philosophies that I really did not consider Especially in a movie that really had more of a gray area than a good guy versus bad guy area. Rorschach being one of them. Rorschach isn't as a typical hero. I consider to be an anti-hero. And in many cases, an anti-villain. He does not see the world uh, with sparkles and you know fun and sunshine. He sees it just like his mask uh, represents. A black and white scenario. Nevertheless... I, I felt the film was very good. I thought the film was great. It wasn't perfect, but I felt the film was good and getting that point across. And I guess one of the main reasons why I liked it, the film was because I didn't get into the comic book until after the film. So those who had definitely complained about it, I really, I, I looked at read the comic. I said, well, it was not possible to put the octopus in this film, but the stuff they did put in and stuff they did kept, I actually think it worked. Now, a lot of people was turned off about the fact that Pe Ma Cap uh, Mr. Manhattan wasn't wearing any clothes. <laughs> I can understand it. it. It's not something of a very comfortable thing to see. I was actually kind of surprised that they kept that in there. Well, at least put some blue underwear or something. But no, they, they try to stay as authentic to the, to the movie as possible. And I got to give them respect for that. Now, we hear years later after the film was released, and now we have a TV series which follows the continuity of what was going on between uh, what was going on be at the events of the Watchmen. And what makes this series um, so unique, and by the way, before I continue, I'm not spoiling anything here. It's the first episode, um, and I feel that it's best for you guys to see this, but I will bring in some details that the episode's seen and give you my honest opinion about whether I like it, I didn't like it, and tell you why. Um, it definitely is taking place years later. It's not in New York, which I thought it would be. It's actually in some small, um, southern town. Um, it has that sudden, you know, south accent. You have the Rorschach Gang. I know they don't buy a different name, but I'm calling them the Rorschach Gang. Who seem to be pretty much trying to spark a revolution. Or so you think, because we really don't know what's going on. And in the scene, in the very beginning scene, actually, after we see the um, scene of a boy, an infant child, um, you know, escaping what seems to be a burning inferno, 
the family didn't, the parents, the mother and dad didn't make it, <clears throat> but the kid did. And he plays in a very important part later. But in that scene, it's pretty much setting up the premises. It's basically what that is. It's not really giving us any uh, real information as to why the Rorschach gang is having a feud with the police. But we do know that the police are under heavy restriction to use their firearm. Which, to me, is very interesting. And in how the police cannot use their firearm and it will remain locked unless they feel that they're in danger. But that's not the most unique part about this. The most unique part about this is that all the police officers are acting like superheroes. Meaning that they have, it's pretty much like a secret identity. They're not allowed to reveal that they're police. To most of the family members, they are bakers, like one of the main characters, or those who are doing a delivery for some pizza shop or whatever. This is something that has been uh, pretty much easily established that these cops, no one knows who they are. They're wearing a mask, and some of them wearing costumes, and it's utterly ridiculous. I think the guy with the panda bear was the most stupidest thing I've ever seen. I don't know why did they actually put him in there, especially when you, he's a cop. You have those who stand out. I think that's based on ranks. But the female lead in this film, for film is pretty much the main focus. Um, you see her going to the bakery. You see her getting you know, dressed. You know, and she is pretty much wearing the uniform. The police also are not exactly all innocent here. They are brutal. Especially when you attack their own. In, the, in this, sh this one-hour show, one of the cops got shot very badly. Just for doing his job. He realized that they were wearing, he was realizing this all happened because he discovered that the driver had a Warshack mask, didn't make a scene, and felt his life was dangerous. Trying to get the gun, the gun would not operate, but by the time he had the chance to do anything, he was shot a few times. The guy threw out a head of letters and just drove off. It was actually something very interesting about that and I said okay we're, we're obviously getting into some interesting territory here so we have for a whole hour we see the police trying to, try to capture the Walshack gang and it led to probably one of the big showdowns in a ranch now that's not the only thing that's happening here and that is we have other characters involved which is Jeremy Irons now, before I go any further here, I'm going to cut short in saying that he's Dr. Manhattan. I don't think he is. I think he's a different character altogether. <coughs> but he is very unique. This character is definitely interesting, if I can say best. Where he is sitting down. And he has the most weirdest servants I have ever seen. A maid and a butler. It, it, he was typing, and I see him with no clothes on as he types while well, a woman who in a if you look at it looks like she's doing something that we uh, that we wouldn't really expect to see on HBO even on HBO standards but intended that she was giving him a massage but still if you look at where how they pull how they position it you will have other things going in your head other than massage it was just a weird introduction of how they did it especially when he was writing down with the horses okay right, it's good good he's typing in an old typewriter kind of weird typewriter if you if you ask me it was kind of interesting said this is the future of time or this is just how he choose to write I mean there, there are other people still write typewriters this day but it was that one scene that definitely just raised an eyebrow <clears throat> and how his servants which it seemed from what I've been standing only two of them the, the maid and the and the butler <laughs> seems to have a great fondness for this man that I don't know who he is I don't know what his purpose is I know from what I've seen in the previous to the X episode but it is an interesting premise I, I am actually curious as to where it is gonna go the series ends pretty much with the character of Wilson Gossip Jr. which was revealed to be the the boy in the very beginning who lost his parents and we saw him walking in a um, farm field or a road that like, was surrounded by farm him taking his what I assume to be sister 
which was not seen at the end of this film. I don't know if that she's still alive. I don't know anything. Like I said, this this move this show does not give us too much information. But what we did give information is Lucifer Gossip Jr. Which, by the way, I'm kind of happy that he's getting a steady work. I feel that he's going to be a very strong part and a very strong key of this show. He played a man in a wheelchair, and it is a very telling, um, not very comfortable um, character. Because he did talk, and at first he, he seemed he seemed to be out of place in his bakery. That he asked, "Is this bakery ever going to open?" And he, she said, "Yes, it's going to be open in a few months." But we all know that it's just a front for her to put on the costumes. Again, the cops here are are have secret identities. They live double lives. They're no longer allowed, at least in this world, to reveal that they're cops. They have to wear a mask to protect themselves. Somebody I get a little used to. And uh, she walked in, got, went to the secret paddle, changed to a police uniform, and left. A big fear by the back door. However, it was revealed that the uh, guy, the old guy, played by Lucy Gossip Jr., knew who she was the whole time. And the series ends with probably one of a shocker, with one of the characters pretty much not going to make it to episode two. It was a shocker to me. I, I was not. I was expecting one thing, and I got a whole different thing, and it left me with more questions than answers. But that's not a bad thing, especially if they are going to build these characters up, build the story up piece by piece, episode by episode. Then, by all means, I'm on board. I like this. I actually did. I still don't know what's going on. It's a, it's, to me, it's a work in progress. It is one episode. But for what I got, for what it's worth, I actually enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I thought the story was interesting. <coughs> I thought the setup was was nicely built. They didn't give me too much. In fact, they gave me very little. If I got any issue, I, I think this is one of the issues that I have, is the fact that how they jump cut from one group of one characters to another. It seemed to follow that soap opery jump where... You see them in the middle of something, and then all of a sudden they jump into Jeremy Irons' character without really uh, any soft transition. To be truthful, I don't know if you can have a soft transition with the way they with the way they setting this up, but it would be nice to get a little bit more information, a little bit more of what's going on, and and before they go to the next character, it, it just felt like it came out of nowhere. Now maybe it's just the way the style is. I'm not used to it. But it did hurt the pacing a bit when it when it came to this because I'm like, okay, it's, it's going slow, it's going very steady. I still don't know what's going on, and I still don't know why the the, the villains, if these guys are villains, have a gripe with the world. I'm not too sure if I'm actually feeling that the that the Rorschach wannabes are a white supremacist, but then again, we don't know. We just don't know. So it's going to be very interesting to see where this goes in. But I tell you this, it's enough for me to give it another world. Because again, I am curious as to what this is. I, I'm beyond with you. I did not expect this type of storytelling from DC. And I, for one, I actually got to applaud them for it. Because it, this is something that is different. Something that, uh, that can pique people's interest. Now, of course, there are those who are Watchmen fans who may not like this show, and that's fine. I don't, I don't, I, you know, they probably have different reasons, especially when they they know what Watchmen is and they feel this is not my Watchmen. It's a legitimate respectful response. But for what it's worth, I actually did enjoy it, and I actually did like it, and I felt that the show did benefit from it. <coughs> so overall, I gave it three stars. <coughs> Excuse me. I have posted my my brief feelings on Twitter I may do uh, a follow-up on how I felt overall with the show once the season's over I'm not gonna do episode by episode but for what I feel with a first impression I thought it was pretty good I thought they willed me in very very good I enjoyed um, the premises I actually like the fact that it's not being done in New York but being done in a unconventional superhero type town 
And that brings me to my next thing. Um, and this is something I said. I don't know. I don't feel there's superheroes in this show. I think there's something big going on. I think the character is going to play a big role that we're seeing. You already know Julius Lacanza Jr. is going to be a more bigger role than what he is just being a boy in a wheelchair. Or a man in a wheelchair. In fact, they already said, established that he is more older than what he um, looked to believe. Of course, in, at least of course in the previews. So, this is definitely an adult-oriented show. This is not a you know typical kid-friendly show. This is an adult-oriented show, and I like that. Keep it tight. Keep it real with that with the graphic novels. You don't need to have everything catered to kids. This is not a kids' comics, and I think that's a smart move for them, and I think that's a smart move uh, for HBO. And I think they're in a good spot with HBO. I think HBO will give them that range that they need. I don't think they're going to be tied out. Like I said, I am very curious. It is only the first episode, but it is an episode that I felt that is a work in progress that you really have to watch <clears throat> at least two or three episodes <coughs> to really get the jets of what's going on. I think that's a, a bit of a stretch for a lot of people. I think they, they want to expect to know what's going on right away. But to me, I think the build, as long as you have interesting characters and an interesting premise, I think people will give it a shot and let that story play out. And I think that's the very important part. And I think that's the, uh, the, the thing that the um, Watchmen has to do. And, you know, keep it fresh, keep it original. And overall, I think it's the first episode is a three-star episode. Very, very good. Pacing issues aside, and, and also the fact that it didn't really reveal much, I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it. So, what you guys think about it? Give me your opinion on it. Let me know if you actually liked it, did not like it. Let me know why. But I'm moving on, because there's two movies I want to talk about that's in that lineup. Um, first off, let me go on and say that I, uh, like I said before in the um, previous, um, in the previous video I did, um, the photo of the Fast and Furious cast that came out, at least a part of it, um, it looks interesting. Talk like John Cena, who's by right away, is having a time of his life in Hollywood. He has been a very busy boy in Hollywood, now part of the Fast and Fury family. If they, if that's what they like to call themselves, there, that's fine. And uh, for the for the most part, um, besides the fact that the vid picture doesn't really reveal too much, it looks like everything is well. Hopefully that stays that way, because frankly, I'm I'm very heartbroken that there is tension, particularly between The Rock, Diesel, and Tyrese, who I do not know if he's going to be in this movie. I don't think he will. I think they're going to move on. And let uh, and have the new actors, especially with John Cena, take over that role from there. I don't think, in all personality, I don't think that you're even going to hear any reference from Harbin Shaw. Now, keep on Harbin Shaw. If you take a look at internationally, was a big hit. Internationally, they did very well. If you put all the all the blockbuster move uh, receipts together, they did well. By itself, in the, U in the United States and in Canada and Mexico. Not so much. They did not make it past their budget. But I don't think that matters because they are all counting worldwide tickets and to them they did well. But it does raise the question of whether or not they should do another spin-off like this because spin-offs this spin-off wasn't cheap. It really wasn't. And it didn't make back his money that, that many people hope it would. Trust me, it did well in terms of numbers. They did made hundred million, but when you film, when you made 130 million, and you film close 160 million. <coughs> that's that's the feeling. Nonetheless, at least worldwide, and I can say that with respect, that at least there was a fan interest. If not from the United States, there was definitely fan interest in Japan, China, and in other circuits of the world that actually liked the stuff like they was doing. Can't say the same for Gemini Man. <laughs> Jeremiah Man did not do well at all, and I'm actually going to be pulling out the numbers here. But needed to say, Jeremiah Man is a complete disaster right now. They are not happy right now. <clears throat> How much will this be in terms of losses for the studios? I think the small studios 
are going to feel the effects a lot more than the others. And I'll explain. Because one, let me hold on a second. Let me just pull this up. The, there were multiple studios working on this, and I think that is a blessing in disguise for a lot of reasons. For one, they, they won the major ones. The ones that you come to expect, the one that uh, that makes the big cash, if you want to say it like that. <coughs> I'm trying to figure out where to get. They are not going to get the one of the hits. It's not going to be. It's not going to damage their um, their bottom line, their quarterly, uh, because again, it wasn't the brunt of it. Like say for Disney, Disney pretty much. <coughs> you say Disney film. It is a big deal because number one, they're taking a large chunk of the of the risk, and because of that, they risk being in the red, just not by by the two films or one film that they that bombed. See, that's the thing that I think you need to understand that these films they make they may make a lot of money, but if one or two of these films bomb that could really affect the bottom line <clears throat> and affect how they release films um, in the future this is why when I say to people trying to find out why my computer don't want to cooperate with me <laughs> that's why I say to people when about the films that comes out because number one if a film does not make his money it could actually affect how they release films here on out. Look at Star Wars. Star Wars Solo bomb. That was the one bomb it took for them not to not to release any more Star Wars stories, at least in theaters. The film it was not worth it. It just wasn't worth it. <clears throat> okay, so uh, let, me, let me explain how with Gemini, man. Gemini. Made only thirty-six million dollars in the box office. That's it. Okay, that's how much they made in just in the few weeks that they've been out. They've been out now for two weeks. Adam's family have made more money than them, <coughs> and Adam's family. Have made an additional 16 million, which won't that was Tony total gross to 57 million, and they've been out two weeks. Adam's family was slated to bomb. They were slated to actually have a bad, bad box office because one, many people didn't think they were interesting. Many people, uh, they thought that it was not it was not going to watch this film, and I think they got one thing major factor with the Adam's family. One, the Adams family is a pretty much a re, not a much reimagining, but pretty much is based on the actual macabre of the comic strip. That's one. And two, they forgot that there's children who may actually want to take have their parents take them to see the Adams family. It came out at the exact right time, pretty much almost the same time as the other Adams family it came out during the October and November season. And to me, this I, like I said, I don't know how much cost this is going to make. But when you're averaging three thousand nine hundred and seventy-three, and you're making fifty-seven million, you're doing something right. Where Gemini Man came out the same time as Adam's Family, only made thirty-six million. Now, granted, Zombie Land Double Tap isn't doing very much better either. They're they're out, they're at only a twenty-six million. That's their first week. And then you also have Maleficent. Which has a gross of thirty six million. So again, I gotta let this be known that this is what we're seeing here. This is what we're we're, we're looking at. That's the power ranking. And the question you need to ask is what's going on here? Well, first, Gemini Man has been in limbo for a while, and many people probably didn't wasn't interested. And as for Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, 
which a lot of people tell me there wasn't anything special about that film either, really didn't draw the people back in, especially when it was disappointed with the last film. Film been out, film hasn't been out for too long. And some people even told me that, hey, listen, they, they came out with Dumble, they came out with Aladdin, they came out with, with, with The Lion King. How many more films, can, how many more Disney films do you think I can watch? <coughs> There's too many Disney films out there. There's going to be a lot more next year. The only film I don't know they're still working on is Little Mermaid. Are they still working on that? I don't know. <laughs> but do you understand where we're, we're coming from here? It's a lot of stuff going on. And not many people are very pleased about it. Not many people are very pleased at all. So a lot of people, word of mouth is not strong. And they just probably stay home. Now Zoolander, again, I'm kind of curious because again, I don't know if Zoolander, I don't know their budget yet. I'm trying to find out how much they cost and maybe it will tell me <clears throat> in due time. Let me see if I can find it. But they only made 26 million. But I seriously doubt it cost that much to make. I'm, I'm not too sure if it does. Let me see. I'll get back to probably do it in another video. But they nevertheless. <clears throat> this has been a very interesting week. The film that made the most money, especially as what I what I have been looking at, happens to be the film that nobody thought was going to do good. And that was Adam's Family. And this is largely because it's a Halloween film aimed for families. And I think families are more comfortable taking them to there than any other films so far that I've seen. Strangely enough, Zombieland is the only horror base zombie film and horror based film period that has come out so far this Halloween. I have not seen much horror films come out. I, I know there's another film that's coming out with the app telling you date of your death. It is a soft horror. I, I know that. But I haven't seen too many films came out this year with horror. I was kind of a little surprised. In fact, there's some film that's coming out during November that's horror based. I'm kind of curious that they that they came out with all the horrors this year, with Annabelle and God knows any other films that came out during during during, during the month of the summer. But it hasn't been. I, I took the list. I'm like, hmm, this October it didn't seem to have any much horror based films. You would think that that would be the, uh, the 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 be the cream of the crop for them. October, Halloween, people dressed in Halloween costumes, a fright fest. Of movies could easily uh, come in people want to get scared but that has not been the case and I don't think that's been the case for some time a large chunk of horror films is not being released in October it's being released in the most awkward time possible I remember horror fest I don't know if you guys remember the I don't even know if they still have it or not but horror fest used to be a string of films all horror or slasher that was released at a certain time you get to watch these films and these films would get a push some films actually get a major release some films do not you know when they do horror fest not in October but November they don't do horror fest. they never did horror fest in October which was kind of weird but it did garner a lot of uh, fans and it did actually got two sometimes three films to get released at a later date So maybe maybe the horror horror genre isn't as strong in October than many people would have thought. Maybe they have a better shot of doing it outside of that um, of that of that month. Who knows? But nevertheless, that's what it is. But back to Gemini Man. Gemini Man failed. <laughs> people are saying it's a colossal disaster. I will have to wait and see um, how the how the how the um, the studios will do. They re it's a big split between a lot of the studios, but a lot of them are going to take a big hit. The small studios are going to take a big hit because they can't afford. Because one, most of these small studios, especially if they're doing you know a collaboration with bigger studios, for them taking a hit, because they can stop them or put them out of business. That's how big 
hit this could be for the studio. So it all depends. See how it works. I know Will Smith has his own studio, but they're not going anywhere. I think Will Smith <clears throat> is uh, a, a very cautious businessman in his own right. I think he. I, I think they're gonna be fine. I hope so. I, I do like to see Cobra Kai season three. <laughs> <coughs> but um, yeah, th that that can be a very big, big boat bump for these studios. Like I said, they can come out with five movies. If one of the five movies have a hard time making money, it can legate all the other films that already been released. That's how big. That's how much of a risk releasing film that has such a high budget. Because if they don't get the audience and they don't do it right by advertising, it could it could lead to uh, to people being turned off. It can happen. So let's just hope that that, uh, that the studios can recover. As for Will Smith, I'm not worried about Will Smith. Will Smith is going to be just fine. He had a hit with Aladdin. You know, Aladdin is a billion dollars club that they like to call it. And he has a new movie. He has a movie that people are dying to see. Even though I don't think the trailer did much to impress me, Bad Boys for Life. So he's gonna be he's gonna be busy for the next couple years. He's he's gonna be just fine. Disney, on the other hand, I am kind of concerned about because Disney is doing this a similar line with their live action fairy tale lineup or just live action films in general. Pretty much using it as a cash cow now. And I think that really more than anything else have hurt um, a couple of these films. One of them happened to be Maleficent. Maleficent did not do well, did not make a good first impression, and the numbers show it. It also shows that Disney needs to slow down a little bit. <clears throat> They're pumping out these films way too quickly. <coughs> like I said earlier, I felt that they are there's a semi line style that they're doing is actually going to be hurting them more than actually gain. If you take a look at their lineup, there's four films that came out. Dumbo was not a hit. Let's get that real clear. Dumbo was an absolute bomb. You had The Lion King that did well. There's no question about Aladdin did incredibly well. Despite the fact that the critic that the ratings were mixed to lukewarm, they did well. But then you have Maleficent that didn't do well. Now the question is, is it because of the acting? Possible. Although I think that Angelina Jolie and uh, the and Elaine Fanny works well together. And I think they are not the, really the issue with this uh, movie. It's more of the issue of the fact is that they change a little too much where it becomes unrecognizable. A lot of people who have saw this film tell me the same thing. As for me, I'll see this film with my daughter right now. I was this as I before recording this I had an enjoyment watching my daughter sing to Frozen as a film that I'm getting myself ready for a sequel I'm actually happy to see this film because now I can actually <coughs> finally see what was a big deal with, with this movie I did not run to theaters when I watched this film but my daughter was watching at home I sat there and I watched and I enjoyed it and now I can actually take my daughter to the theater to watch Frozen 2 how that will be, I do not know, but it is a record breaker, and I'll tell you what it is. Nevertheless, here you have Disney, and Disney really do. It's, it's kind of surprising because when you, if you look back at in the 1989s, even 1991, 92, or 93, to have Disney come out with this many films is a rarity. Disney had a formula, and they had a formula that's very, very interesting. They have a couple films to be released at their secondary studios, whether it's TriStar or Hollywood, which is now defunct, by the way, but those were their secondary studios. They release a couple of live action family films on Disney, and they will probably release one, just one, animated film a year in their studio. It's very rare to see an animated film get released twice. It's very, very rare. But Disney had that formula going. Now, they're releasing a dozens, and that's largely because of the Pixar. They can release more than one or two more animation, but, they can, but they've been releasing a hell of a lot more 
um, of these films really uh, under their brand. A lot of these out, a lot of these out live action films would probably only get m at most to release, and everything else that they want to release will be pretty much in their studios. Well, they don't use TriStar that much anymore. TriStar has pretty much been a dormant studio. They come out with something if they need be, but they don't really use the name TriStar anymore. Hollywood Pictures is defunct and it no longer exists. They still got the library, but they no longer exist as a studio. And Disney itself has just been pumping out more and more of these fairy tale films. And I think that's going to hurt them. I really do. I think they need to slow down a little bit. I'm not saying don't release them. If you want to release them, that's their discretion. They got Mulan. Little Mermaid, I don't know if it's still being made or not. That's something that's going to be, be done. I don't know what else they have in store other than that, but for the fact, the fact that they're releasing four a year, it's a little bit much. Uh, way, way too much. Uh, to me, it, it can be more hurtful than anything else because <coughs> those who want to see these films but don't want to scrap, keep going back and forth to the theater and taking their kids, after all, it is expensive. Kids are often hard to actually discipline in theaters. That becomes a problem. That's a huge problem. So I don't know if that's gonna, uh, I don't know if that's a wise thing. Like I said, they came up with four, four, two made money, and look like these two ain't. Especially when a film that nobody, nobody was asking for. I don't remember one person said, oh, I can't wait to see Melissa and two. I've actually forgotten they actually did a, do, was doing a sequel. I've heard about it. I heard Angelique Jolie was on board, but I didn't know they was going to go through with it. It was so quiet. But nonetheless, they did it. Didn't do well as they hoped for. But then again, when I'm looking at the lineup, I'm saying, well, I'm not surprised. They had four films. Four Disney live action films. That's way too much. <laughs> I think one, maybe two a year is fine, but four, you're asking the audience for too much. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys think I'm being wrong on thinking that way, but I think they need to slow down. They need to really read the fans, uh, their their audience a lot more, which is something they've been lacking lately with their, with their movies. And not just Disney. You know, Lucasfilms is doing the same thing. <laughs> now, I'll get to the Star Wars thing real quick. But I think they need to realize that, hey, you know, these assembly line films can only go take you so far before it actually puts you in financial wrongs. And trust me, they have not gotten through this. They have had gone through these financial situations before. I think they need to slow down and just you know, basically you make the movies, but make it more in a spread out situation. Last time I checked, Lion King is still playing in theaters and we're still, um, and it's just not release. What do you guys think? I like to hear what your, your opinion on that. I really do. I've seen the Star Wars final trailer. I've seen all three trailers. I said it before and I say it again. I'm actually looking forward to seeing how this series ends. People are afraid right now because of how they portrayed 3PO. I am, of course, am not because they killed 3PO off on numerous occasions in this series. And the prequel, he had his head chopped off. And the original, he had gotten blown to bits. So if he died, it, 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 to me, the the impact when I saw 3PO get blown to bits shook me to my core. Because I did not see that coming. <clears throat> but here, I'm not going to say, I'm, I'm going to be very specific and very honest. I really, if they kill him off, and if they do it right, so be it. One, you've been killed off so many so many times in the original series, and I think if you look back, you can make a count how many times he got blown up, his head got taken off, <laughs> him got thrown all the way around. <clears throat> so they can give him an honorable, respectable sent off. I'm for it. But this has not been a ha he his his legacy has not been a happy one. He's been one big giant punchline in many ways. 
So they can give him that, <clears throat> you know, salute and that farewell. Because he is part of that Skywalker's, Skywalker's link, that lingers, that, that, that legacy. Let's do this. I am curious as to what we're actually going to get. What is the Emperor Palpatine's role in this? How has he been the big, the big, the big cheese? <clears throat> I do agree with many people. He was not meant to be the main villain in this film. I think they should have stayed with Stoke. But we can all thank John, Ryan Johnson for that for that little bit. I'm glad they didn't try and say Stoke was so I was alive all along. But I am kind of curious of what the Emperor is planning and how he links into these these other two films if he actually linked at all. He is the evil Ray here, which um, I'll be honest with you, I'm not, I'm not surprised. But we did, but if you look at the trailer, we saw a team up between Ray and Kylo Ren wearing his um, old mask. So obviously something's going on, and I think it has everything to do with the Emperor. Why is it every time when something crazy happens, the Emperor always in, in the middle of this? And I hope they answer the question that I just want to know: Is this a clone of the Emperor? Or is this actually the Emperor who somehow survived a plunge all the way down a chute in the Death Star? Which, by the way, blew up. I don't remember him getting on a ship and going out and being high. I just don't know. But I am kind of curious as to what, what this will lead on to. Now, tickets already went on sale. And they said they've done very well. I don't know how legit the tickets are. The people are questioning it. <coughs> but what we did is buying it. I know when I was in the Bronx, they did have advanced ticket sales. But I'm gonna be real with it, so it's not out of the possibility. The problem I have, I think, the problem that I think that many fans are concerned about, to a degree, because let's be honest, this is if this if we didn't have social media, you wouldn't have known that studios, not just Star Wars, but studio in general, tend to do multiple endings and do that for a reason. That's why they have like a studio test. I am kind of curious and concerned about the reshoots. There's one thing I wouldn't be plainly concerned about. I wasn't concerned when I heard the reshoots a few months ago. But it's now a, not a few months ago. We are two months into the release of Star Wars. The, the Rise of Skywalker. And we're still hearing about reshoots. That is pretty much not a normal practice. <clears throat> Normally, when you're this close, the film is already finished, it's already in post-production, it's ready to go. So the fact that they're still reshooting when it's only, we only have a month and two weeks to go. That's it. A month and two weeks. October is almost done. And I'm, instead of actually getting ready for this, uh, for this great opening I got it here that they're still reshooting now a lot of this could be over exaggeration for all we know is they could be done already but since they haven't shot these rumors down that is concerning that is very concerning but like I said before if that if it's just the ending okay fine if the ending is not done there but it's concerning it's taking them this long to get that to, to get the get the ending they feel comfortable with. Now I've already seen also some people are saying too little, too late. This is this is all franchise is ruined, everything else. I just gotta ask you guys a question. Just just, 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 just do me one favor. Let us see the film first before we pass judgment of whether this film is good or bad. I, I just wanna know. Just, just let me let me let, let me see the film. Before you, before you blast it and trash, trash at the ground. Let me, let me at least try to fans and enjoyment. If you still hate the film, fine. But can I see it first before you start making articles about a film that hasn't been released yet? Let's just hold off the situation. I'm, I'm more concerned about the ending than anything else because again, we're not that far fetched, and it doesn't seem like they're any close to actually having a legitimate ending to the film. <clears throat> I hope they do before the end. I hope it'll be satisfactory to all fans. But for now, I ain't gotta be concerned. It's very concerning. But what about you guys? What do you think about it? 
Let me let me know in the comment section. Until next time. <coughs> it's J77. I want to apologize again for the stupid cough. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the conversation. Hope you guys will give me a comment on how you feel about this conversation we just had. Until next time. It's me saying take care and be safe.